Shalom Chavri, I'm Stephen Bernoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Right now, all eyes are on North Korea. And from what we're hearing, uh, and I already knew this information, I know RT is reporting this here, new Korean war may break out at any moment, according to the Chinese foreign minister. Now, we've been watching this kind of by a play-by-play -play, uh, all day today with Steve Herman. Steve Herman is actually there in North Korea. Uh, he keeps uh, sharing us up to date just by the minute almost of what's happening out there. Uh, the VOA news report, DPRK forces vow toughest action against U.S. military. Uh, that's what he's, he's putting that particular um, article out right there just to kind of let you know what's going on. Pyongyang vows toughest actions as U.S. Naval Strike Group heads to Korean waters there. And he's very serious about that as far as uh, Mr. Kim Jong-un and what he's stating there. Watch what Steve Herman is showing throughout the day here already. Uh, we can back up just, just this morning here, for example, I'll give you a few of the tweets that came out that he put out already. Uh, the KPA warns toughest concentration against the U.S. and its vassal forces will be taken so they cannot survive, reports the KCNA. Uh, and then he's talking about the North Korean government there. Uh, also, Japan mainland, Okinawa, Guam, other U.S. military bases, and U.S. mainland in sites of our strategic rockets warns the DPRK military. That's, of course, the North Korean military. Uh, he also states here, drunken provocation of the Trump administration has become a dangerous step that cannot be tolerated, warns the DPRK military in a statement. All right, now Steve Herman, as I said, he is actually a journalist right now in North Korea. Okay, he states here the DPRK KPA statement also speaks of taking a preemptive strike and targeting U.S. military base and ROK and destroying uh, Chong Wade. And this, he's talking about hitting the U.S. military base there in Japan. He's also talked about hitting the presidential resident in South Korea, Seoul, South Korea, as well as uh, U.S. military bases there in South Korea. Uh, another one here, this is a threat escalation by the DPRK as it, it is coming from a, the spokesman of the KPA general staff. Earlier one was from the foreign ministry. All right, so he's separating these two. It was the general staff that threatens uh, to destroy the military base, U.S. military base there in Japan. And the early one about the drunken provocation, that was from the foreign ministry of uh, North Korea. Then we get down to two hours ago, he says, four media in Pyongyang told to assemble at 5.30 a.m. Saturday to be taking somewhere, likely a military parade on the Day of the Sun. Okay, so they're, they're, they're still making their, they're still doing their, their preparations. China has already warned the U.S. not to strike them during their celebrations, not to do this, not to be provocative in this manner here. Um, then he put out this one here 54 minutes ago, the U.S. Air Force F-35A Lightning II fighter aircraft to deploy to Europe for training. The U.S. Air Force will deploy a small number of F-35A Lightning II aircraft this weekend along plan with a training deployment to Europe. Now that may not seem like no big deal, but that's actually a big deal as well. You're going to find that out as we kind of go into this broadcast here, the very serious things that are breaking. Uh, also, as I mentioned to you earlier, China already moving the S-300 system there to the border of North Korea there, okay? But it doesn't end there. This is what really gets kind of uh, concerning here. Look right here. The Deputy Defense Minister General of the Army of Russia, Dmitry Bulgokov, uh, has arrived in Khaborovsk, Karai, near North Korea to inspect troops. You got that right. Russia has got troops that have been moving closer to North Korea as well. Why is Russia and why is China beginning to, we know, I, I've already given some different theories on China joining up on the border there. One of those, of course, being they could be joining in with the United States. That's what uh, Rex Tillerson seems to allude to. But at the same time, it may not be. Uh, you know, again, I, like I said to you guys the other day, I could be wrong about that. Maybe China's not joining in with uh, the United States to take down North Korea. They could be there to defend North Korea. I mean, that could completely give it a whole new meaning about 
uh, this prophecy over in Daniel 11:44, where the tidings out of the north and out of the east trouble him, but he goes to make away many. But do you realize who the he is? The he is NATO, guys. The he is the NATO forces. Donald Trump leading the way right now, ready to take on Russia, ready to take on North Korea and China, may be willing to back them. A lot of people are going to die as a result of this. And this is not a biblical uh, hero coming in when we read in Daniel 11. But clearly there's no one else. And, and by the way, this is not so much that as Donald Trump is the head leader or that he's some kind of antichrist guy here. That's not what I'm saying. The point is it's the Pope of Rome that calls the shot. I just did an, an incredible video on the Noon Institute, Biblical Research, our channel on YouTube there on the teaching of that. I actually got cut off when I was doing the broadcast the other day. The film ran out and didn't record the entire thing. I apologize for that there. But uh, today, I made sure that I taught on this. I put it on the Noon Institute, and I go into this in a whole new way that even I hadn't thought about before. Uh, but this is something that NATO is a part of. It is NATO that is... I believe it's even NATO that's the Gog of Magog. I mean, think about it. Right now, everybody thinks, well, it's Russia. Russia's going to come down with all of... Who's Russia going to come down with? Gog of Magog. Who, who is it? Did you ever look and look at all the prophecies about that and all the different nations that come with the, that king of the north that comes down the Gog of Magog? Right now, the only three that are with Russia, or three all together, is Russia, Syria, and Iran. Where is everybody else going to be that's going to help uh, Russia to be the Gog of Magog prophecy? Guys, we got to wake up to this. This is just nonsense. NATO is that force, the Gog of Magog. And it's beginning to look more and more like maybe Barack Hussein Obama is still helping to run things in Washington, D.C. I've never seen anything like this. Trump, who gave us all kinds of promises before the election, which I was a little bit leery to begin with because of that close relationship with Rome that he was having there, even though there's a little bit of a spat in there. But I've always been a bit leery. And then to turn around and to get into office and a lot of these promises are changing. We were going to make peace with Russia. We're going to have peace there in the Middle East. We're not going to invade Syria. We're not going to take and uh, we're not going to go over there. And, 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 and you know, Crimea has always been part of Russia. It still should remain the same way. It looks like the elite still control the world, doesn't it? Because it's just the opposite. Everything that we were told is the opposite. Now Russia is not going to get the sanctions list, list, listed unless they give Crimea back to Ukraine. Well, it wasn't Ukraine's in the first place. Uh, and this whole thing about not going to invade Syria. Well, I don't know if you know about this or not, but I reported yesterday this huge, con huge contingent of troops there from the United States that came in through Turkey going into north, uh, northern Syria there to fight Raqqa. Now I understand that's fighting terrorism. I'm all for that as well. But it doesn't change either that the U.S. still moved in all the military equipment into Lebanon. It doesn't change the fact the United States moved equipment into Jordan. It doesn't change the fact that the United States has moved across the border on the southern side uh, of Syria there near Iraq there with the Jordanians there inside of Del Azor. They're going to take down Syria. Everything that President Trump has said, they're doing just the opposite of. Why? Because the agenda is still there and it hasn't changed any. So when we look at the prophecy of Daniel 11:44, when it says he comes to make away many because that tidings out of the north and out of the east have troubled him or angered him might be a better way to put it. He's going to make away many. He comes in with all what? All of his ships. and all, You know, Russia doesn't have a lot of ships. They got one aircraft carrier. NATO's got an unbelievable amount of these ships and things. So it's like I said, this is not necessarily just Trump. Trump's not the leader of this, friends. When Trump says on there, and they, by the way, they moved that part of the video out. They edited it out. But, you know, at least some people were smart enough. I wasn't even copying it or nothing. I'm just listening to it live when President Trump is talking to the first responders of the I-85 bridge collapse. And he gets to the end of it and they ask him the question, did you authorize the drop of the Moab bomb on Afghanistan? And he doesn't answer it. And I'm blown away by it. He just skirts around the question, and then he, he says, you know, he says, I've given, I've got a bunch of great guys running the military. You know, I've, I've authorized them a little while back, so to speak, and I've already authorized them, and they're doing what's got to be done. We've done more in eight, eight weeks than President Obama did in eight years. All right. 
So we killed a lot more people. Maybe that's the answer to it. But the point is, was that President Trump is not in control of the military. Who is giving the authorization for the military to drop the Moab bomb? Now, this was supposed to be a retaliation for the Green Beret soldier that was killed. And of course, they say no civilians were killed. You mean to tell me that big of a bomb is dropped and you don't think civilians are killed? What do you think? ISIS hangs out all by themselves. It's a men-only club over there and they're just running around like a bunch of priests, something like a little bunch of Catholic convent over there, ISIS convent. Event? Come on, you know good and well you don't drop that big of a bomb and don't kill children and women as well right along with it. What happened to the Bush administration that used to at least try to go in there with precision bombs so that they could limit as much civilian casualties as possible? Not just find what Bush did either because Bush invaded Iraq. Why? Because it's a, 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 uh, uh, General Wesley Clark brought it out and everything, you know, it says, you know, if we got a, you know, we got a great military, then everything, every problem must look like a nail so we can use the hammer. This is why we're going to war in all these countries. This, this is absolutely insane, guys. Absolutely insane. So Russia has moved the military down in that area as well. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. This is where, you know, things are getting serious. Pyongyang vows toughest actions as U.S. Naval Strike Group heads to Korean waters. All right. That's, that's another headline coming in from um, uh, voynews.com. Uh, you have North Korea, this here being a Russian uh, uh, site here, RA.RU. North Korea named the goals of possible airstrike in case of U.S. aggression. Uh, that's how I knew about this. Japan, South Korea, the presidential residence in Seoul, North Korea general staff said, uh, the military, U.S. military bases uh, that are that are sitting there. So you have all these targets that are planned on there. And up here, look at this part right here. See this little red here? This is where Russia's military is. Russia's military is sitting right here. North Korea's border is right there. Russia has a little bit of a border with them as well. China's on this whole northern edge here. They're sitting there. Russia's come down. Russia and China are allies. I'd begin, begin to wonder if maybe China and Russia were not as close as allies the way Donald Trump and Rex Tillerson was bringing things out because of their, their, uh, their little bait on the hook that hang over China. You know, if you're a good boy and everything, we're going to make sure we do some great business deals with you. We're not going to just rip you apart like we'd planned on doing. Okay, maybe that works with China. Well, maybe it doesn't work with China. You know, and I'm not here to defend North Korea by no means, okay? Because over here on North Korea, on all that border, this is where China's sitting, Russia's sitting right here and moving down in that direction still, right? All right, now I'm going to show you some of these things here. Let me just, let me get to some of these things I want to show you there. Let me jump over here to, uh, back to Twitter. Now, Steve Herman, I shared that with you there, but let's real quick go over here to, uh, and I think it's on already happened site, but it's actually Michael D., um, that, uh, sorry about that, Michael D. that actually, uh, he's the one I believe that showed this information here. Let me just see, I've got to see if I can find this here. There is a convoy um, uh, here, no, it's actually, uh, okay, no, okay, this, this was the Russian convoy right here, all right? This is the Russian convoy here headed towards North Korea's northern border. Why all of a sudden is Russia sending a military convoy down to the northern border? And a lot of this does look like anti-ballistic missile systems as well, besides the personnel carriers and things. You know, let's look at that again. Again, Russian, Russian military headed towards the border of North Korea. Now, the location that they're giving here, they're not at the border of North Korea, but they are actually headed in that direction there. There's not a whole lot of other places you can possibly go there, friends. And we have an Alive View map already, like I said, showing uh, where, they're, where they're headed to. Um, and this clearly... You know, they were, this is where it was all photographed at. Not a much further to go there to be in that area. Is it that, is, is, is Russia just going to monitor this in the event that their, their friends, the Chinese, get into trouble? They end up backing up the Chinese? I don't know. 
I don't know, but I can tell you one thing. I know there's a lot of people think, well, you know, if this all breaks out into a bad situation, Russia will win. Well, according to Daniel's prophecy, whoever this is, uh, the, the, you know, the king of the north, that, that where the people there in the north and the people in the east kind of make him all mad and he goes to make away many, uh, well, He's going, to make, he's going to kill a lot of people then. In other words, the people of the East and the people of the North, a lot of them are going to die as a result of that. And right now, friends, I hate to tell you this, but you got to be, we got to be honest about this. The only thing that is lining up with biblical prophecy on Daniel 11, 44 right now happens to be the U.S.-led coalition, NATO's forces that are coming against uh, Russia, who is down there trying to... Uh, deliver Syria from the terrorists, and of course the United States going in after North Korea with China loading up their military on the border of North Korea as well. Is North Korea going in there with them, or is, or, or is, North, or is China, excuse me, is China going in there with North Korea, or is it that, that China is there to try to protect North Korea? Nonetheless, we're about to see a war break out unless something drastic happens on the North Korean side with Kim Jong-un, you are going to see something major take place and it doesn't look like it's going to be good. We might very well be seeing prophecy from Daniel, uh, Daniel's prophecy chapter 11. Let me just see if I can pull this up myself. Daniel 11 verse 44 and put in there for Danoon Institute. Let's just see. Prophetic, yeah, here it is right here. This is the video that we did four hours ago. And friends, um, it, I really get into the side of this that no doubt, no doubt is speaking of the That's prophecy the being fulfilled. The that he authorized to strike. I'm thinking, okay, am I the only guy that recognizes this, you know? You want to take, I'll put, a, I'll put a link of this here in the description below. The title of it, Prophetic Alert, U.S. Leads NATO into Fulfilling Daniel 11.44. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. More videos coming up on Danoon Institute uh, tonight as well as we'll be keeping you up to date as things are uh, breaking out there in North Korea and trying to watch Syria all at the same time. <music>